we've got down in Florida, that St. Augustine, but that's a Spanish settlement. We're just talking about the British ones. And we do have other settlements before Jamestown, but they're not successful. And there's a really famous one, and it's famous for not being successful. It's called the Lost Colony. Does anyone know what that one is? What is the Lost Colony for? Yes. <laughs> What's the name of the Lost Colony? <laughs> the Lost Colony, the, the name of the Lost Colony was Roto. Great job. Now, I'm going to give you some points, but you've done a great job on this. So I'm going to have you go for the gold. Lord. Go for the glory. 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 Sorry. That's it. <laughs> Now, Jamestown was established in 1607, and it took them a few years to be successful, but eventually they would become permanent. And then more people came on over in 1620. We had the people who came over on the Mayflower. Who came over on the Mayflower? Who came over on the Mayflower? And what are they? Oh, who came over on the Mayflower? Great job. <laughs> <laughs> the Rebels! The Rebels! The Rebels! I'm going down. Ellie, that was a great year. Ellie, go for the glory. Go for the glory. Go for the glory. So they are mainly known for their plantations, but they also do have ladies' names. I'm not going to help us name them. That starts with a G. What is that? Great job, you guys. Now these little ones right over here. That one is. Treaty of Paris that we're going to talk about today in 1763, but at the very end, 
we're going to sign another Treaty of Paris to end the Revolutionary War, and sometimes it's called the Second Treaty of Paris. So at the very end, I'm going to say, hey, what officially ended the war? And you guys are going to say the Treaty of Paris. <laughs> but back to this one right here in 1763. This gives a bunch of land over here, all the way to like past the Appalachian Mountains, the Ohio River Valley, all the way to the Mississippi River, that now belongs to Great Britain. And you guys, colonists, we have all this new land here, right over there. What are we going to do with it? We're going to go explore, right? Maybe get some land for ourselves. Maybe get to do some trading with the Native Americans. Uh, Trading with the Native Americans like the French, you got it. We might get rich. Everything we're gonna get rich. We're gonna get rich. He was like, whoa, 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 hold up, no. You guys can't go over there. The French people, we were just fighting them. They don't want you over there. That would cause problems. The Native Americans didn't want to trade with you over there. That would cause problems too. You guys, you can't go over there. Stay in your home. Do you guys like being told what to do? No. No, you're gonna be pushed down in here and you're like, where you get to do what you want. The people don't, not all the people listen. Some of them go over there, fights break out, and now the king's like, you guys, I told you not to go over there, but now we have to protect you guys. And that's going to cost the king a lot of what? Money. Your majesty, do you want to pay any more money? No. Those wars were already really expensive. But you're like, i got to protect my people over there, my land, so I'm going to do it. But I'm also going to have my parliament do something about it as well. Let's go, expert. Let's go. Let's go, expert. Let's go. Let's go, expert. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, we're going to make sure that we give them that cheer just like that, and then whenever they sit down, we're going to cut it off, because most of you are supportive, but also respected. Now, I'm going to hand you a microphone over here. We're going to do a quick test to make sure if it gets turned off at any point, we need to turn it on, just flip it on like that. So go ahead and say, testing one, two, three, your best. Testing one, two, three. Perfect. Now, go ahead and tell us your real name. Hi, my name is? Hi, my name is Nolan. Perfect. And what are you an expert on? I am an expert on Parliament. Parliament is a supreme governing body in England with the power to raise taxes and adopt laws. Great job, you're done. Very nice. Big round of applause. Okay, that's done. So then, all you have to do is you can head back to your seat. So when you come up here, you tell us your name, what you're an expert on, and if you read your card, you get uh, 15 points for giving us all the information and teaching us about that word. But if you have a memorized, we know that then you get 10 extra memorization points, bringing us to 20 points, 20 points, 25 points, sorry. 25 points go to... Customs or tariffs are taxes placed 
on items that are going into or out of the country. Nice to stand up to see before you go. Oh, I'm no one. Thank you so much. No, that is going to be the 25 points. So that's $2 that you guys owe me. $2 that you guys owe me because 
course, you guys don't have to pay them for it back either, right? It's important. Now, do you guys have any money with you? Yes? How much money do you have? I'll give you guys a second to go get your money out of your backpack because you have it here with you today. But if you don't, I can take them No. No? Okay. Apple Pay? No. Yeah. PayPal? No. Cash App? No. Robux? No. No, you're not paying it? No. If you could, do you guys have like a Starbucks gift card? Like, you know what You're not. Not for me. Well, it's the law. You guys owe this money to me. I don't and, care. <laughs> you will when I start taking your homes away now. <coughs> Here's the thing. I am going to collect that money from you guys in just a second. Two dollars each and everyone in this. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to figure out how you're going to give me that money. I've got some important business to take care of right over here, and I have no idea what could possibly happen to those funds with while my back is turned. It's like, well, I'm doing this. It's not like they're going to disappear or something while my back is turned. You know, I know they want to pay those two dollars. They got it. They got it by law. What could possibly? Where? Where did all your pencils go? Didn't you guys just have pencils? We didn't just talk about this. That would have the what? Now, are you guys sure? England. Didn't they have pencils? Yes. Don't they owe us two dollars per pencil? No. We all have pencils, right? No. All right. Okay. See, I'm not crazy. They know that you guys have pencils. What are they doing with them? Where'd they go? There's, they're smuggling them. Are you guys smuggling those pencils? No. 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 All right. So we know. I, I think they're smuggling them too, because I know they have those pencils. But where do you think they're hiding them? Under the, see, there's a problem with that. I, I bet you're right. I bet you they're under the seat. I bet you they're under the hat in their pockets. They're probably sitting on them. But the problem with that is that's private property, and I can't just go into their homes or check underneath their chairs or ask to see what is in their pockets without a search warrant, right? But we do have a search warrant. It's a general search warrant, and it's called the Writ of Assistance. Just let's go, expert. Let's go. Let's go, expert. Let's go. I thought we had it. When you said I don't know, I thought. My name is Ishan, I'm an expert on the rate of assistance. A rate of assistance was a le- is a legal document that serves as a general search warrant. It allows the British to search a colonial home or ship for small items or weapons without any good reason. Great job, that's going to be 25 points to <laughs> Now, with the rate of assistance that says general search warrant, now, as a British soldier, I can come into your home and go through all of your stuff. I can go on your ship to see what you have. I can stop you on the street and demand to see what is in your pocket. So you guys are really losing... Like, all these great privacy. Pretty much don't have it anymore because I can just go through all of your stuff. Now, does this seem fair? No. No, and even if you weren't smuggling, even if you had that pencil and you're like, I'm ready to pay my taxes, I would be able to come into your home too and check through all of your stuff because it's a general search warrant for anyone. That's why in our Constitution, we have the Fourth Amendment that says that you can't have unreasonable search and seizure because of things like this with the risk of assistance. Now, I do have to tell you, a lot of those comments were, in fact, smuggling, but I'm not going to take any of your money today. You can put those pencils underneath your seat. And they were smuggling because they didn't want to pay that tax. What was it called? The tax? The, the, the stamp act. The stamp act, something like that, or the town? Oh. Exactly, the town's act. They didn't want to pay those really high taxes. Now, things like this are going on in the colonies. You guys are losing rights. You're paying all these high taxes. So they start shouting, rallying right. Everyone repeat after me. Everyone say, no taxation without representation. No taxation without representation. And what that means is you comment, you don't want to be taxed. You want to have these laws passed unless you have a say in parliament. So they're passing all of these things. You don't even get a vote. And this is what that would look like, all right? Because you want to have your voice heard. <coughs> You guys, uh, right, right, folks, you're going to be my parliament, the Supreme Governing Body, and we want some more money out of these colonies. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass something they love, and it's called recess. So if we can pass the recess act, now recess is not a necessity, it's a luxury, so we can pass some, we can have a high tax on it. So we're going to tax them $5 per recess for everyone that they take. How many are they allowed each day? Two. Two. So they might have to give us up to $10 per day if they take their recesses. But again, they don't have to, right? So all of those in favor of getting $10 per colonist every single month, $50 a week per colonist. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 All those not in favor of paying that recess, say nay. 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 Can you guys hear me? No. All right, let's try one more time. Super loudly.
and we want to visit them and say, hey! Yeah! Could you hear that? I couldn't hear you. Now, there's a couple reasons we can't hear you, and the first one is we don't care. We want your money, right? And now, because if we cared, you guys would have a say, but you don't. You don't have anyone over here in Parliament voicing your concerns, voicing your opinions, or even getting, getting to have a vote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, we're we're building up. We're building up. Now, that's why they're so upset. That's why they're shouting at no taxation without representation. Because you guys are paying tax, but you don't get to have a say on anything. A lot of these things are affecting you. Now remember, when I was over here, I was a British soldier, and I'm over here telling you guys you have to pay these taxes, right? Things are getting pretty tense because you guys don't like having soldiers over here enforcing this kind of thing. That's telling you have to pay all this stuff. So the colonists start calling those soldiers horrible names. Some of the colonists' names are really bad. Has to do with these red coats. The colonists are calling those soldiers what? Oh, Everyone give me a. Oh, I know. Shocking language. Now, oh no, you fainted. You okay? Maybe fan raises a little bit. Now, the reason we're calling them is because of the red coats. Now the red coats have pale, so the blue ones. But they're calling them that. For a few reasons. One reason, they know that these are they're relatively new coats and they're some brand power, one of the most powerful militaries in the world, and every time they walk by, they hear, and like a lobster, when you're calling them lobster. So that's, that's insulting, kind of, but we don't really see how insulting it is because what do we think about lobsters today? What do you they're think? Yummy. They're <laughs> yummy. They're expensive. They're kind of fancy, right? Exactly. It's delicious. But that's not really how people thought about lobsters back then. <coughs> People thought of them as pretty gross. They fed them to their cows and the same thing, but they thought of lobsters as the cockroaches of the sea. So what you're actually saying when you call them a lobster back is they're cockroaches of the sea, bottom feeders. And remember, they're a mighty navy, so that, that's rude, right? It's just hurtful. It hurts your feelings. So when a group of colonists and soldiers, well, this is March 5th, 1770, and it gets really out of control because some colonists start calling these soldiers a what? What was the word again? Lobster Exactly. And then they start throwing insults back and forth, and the colonists all of a sudden get hit with the butt of a musket. And then a huge crowd forms. So I need the white Tories and the blue rebels get down on the ground and start making pretend snowballs. Sorry, start making those snowballs. On the ground, three, we're going to throw them with the British soldiers. One, two, three, and boom! Wow! All right, now that hurt a little. Oh, that is coming. But that hurt a little bit, but it gets out of control. It becomes a full on ride. You guys start putting rocks and shells in those snowballs. Throw them out! March 5th, 1770. And with that, shots are fired. And five colonists are killed and six are wounded in the Boston Massacre. And one man killed in the Boston Massacre was a man named Crispus Attucks. Where's Crispus Attucks? Big round of applause for my very first actor. Now, you are a star, and you are not ready right now. You're Crispus Attucks, okay? That's how you're going to introduce yourself. Now, I'm going to do a breakdown of how you get up to 55 points meter up here. First things first, if you read your cards, you get 25 points for sharing that information with another with everyone. If you have a memorized, you get 70 points. If you have a prop and a costume, you get more points. Now I see your awesome costume. Perfect, you got a snowball right over there. That's worth more points. You gotta make sure you bring your prop up as well. Now there's an action on everyone's card. When you do that action, then you're gonna get five more points. We'll talk about yours in just a second. But it could be something like stomping your foot, because you're very upset with these songs. It could be being very, very, very old, because you're the oldest sign. It could be throwing a bunch of tea into the sea. All of those things can get you those five points. But if you want the extra five points, you're going to have to show off some acting skills. Now, that's just extra, extra points if you want to show off your acting skills. That means if you want to do a British accent, I'll give you five extra points. That's considered, that's considered to be your acting skills. And if you want to do a French accent, if your card says Walter, you can do a French accent. It doesn't have to be a accent. Even if it's a horrible one, like the one I just did, <laughs> I'll still give you points. Now, if you don't know what a British accent sounds, sounds like, I bet you do because if you've ever seen Peppa Pig, she's British. Harry Potter is British. Raised in Star Wars, British. All right, so I know you guys know what a British accent sounds like. 
But if you need help, just let me know. Now, any advice or questions about it? You guys practice your best peasant pig in just a second. All right, go ahead. Oh, let me snore. The snores still count, though. I'm sorry, they'll still count. Sorry. 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 Now, do you 
special message from His Majesty King George III. We're just stuck for your message. Don't forget to stuck for your message. All right. Another big round of applause for the King. Woo! Hello, my name is King George III. I'm the leader of the British Empire, and I feel that the colonies England has set up are under my control. The Americans dare to demand certain freedoms, but I will not hear of it. My advisors will tax the colonies in Parliament, and if they continue to cause problems, I will send troops to stop the revolution. Big round of applause. Yeah. 
all the tangents. Now, who's glad you're doing the tangents? Right. That's right. So we've got this one right over here, this red cross, which is St. George's Cross for England, and then that white one is St. Oh, Andrew Scotland. That's right, for Scotland, exactly. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland on here, so this flag's too old for that. And Wales kind of holds them with the Great Britain. Wales, yeah, that's not. What was that, Wales? Yeah. That's a whole long, complicated story. But yeah, they kind of fall under England, I guess. Now, those 13 stripes on there for the 13 colonies, when you put those together, that shows the great relationship, right? Because remember, we love being part of the British Empire. We just thought the king was being unfair. And we want the king to listen, your majesty. Are you going to listen to these colonists? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one man who knew the king wasn't going to listen to that. We're going to have to fight for our freedom. He is Patrick Henry. Like Patrick Henry. Big round of applause for Patrick Henry. <laughs> So go 
able to come on over here. We're going to show you how not only to load them, but how to use them respectfully and safely. Now, I'm going to give you this one. You're going to put it on your left hand shoulder. It's solid wood. I go and put it right over there, and you just put it kind of like this. You're going to put it, like, hold it like that. Uh, right over here, you stand on that scarf. Now, they would often, most often, be held like this, but it's a little bit more comfortable, so we're gonna hold like that. Now, these would have been, these flintlock muskets, they would have been super tall. They would have been about five to seven feet tall. Now, I'm five three, so I was about five feet. So with a much longer barrel, they would have been about my height, and then you put that spear or sword like thing, what's that thing called? Bayonet. Bayonet, exactly. Now, we're not using those today, that's for close combat. But if you put that on there, they could be like two feet taller than me, maybe about seven feet tall. They would have been about nine to 12 pounds, and in some of those scenes, you're going to be marching. So think about that. Marching with nine to 12 pounds for miles and miles. Now, I'm going to come stand right next to you, okay? So I just want to let you know that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand right over here, and think about it this way. You guys have those scenes where you are doing some marching, and if you're holding it like this, and before you guys start, someone calls your name and you turn very quickly, what's going to happen? Yeah. You're going to smack them on the head, so you got to make sure it's up, down, and so it's like over and over here, plus just make sure that you realize that there's something right behind you, all right? So just like that, just the way you're doing this. Because this is, like I said, solid wood, we like to be getting hit with part of the back, and that will really hurt. Now, how many shots does a flintlock musket get? Call it out. One, and then what do you have to do every single time? Exactly, every single time you pretend to fire one of these, you are going to reload it. So we're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to pretend to be those Minutemen because those are the skilled fighters. Those are the ones who can get off about three shots per minute. But if you're a, uh, a regular militia man, that could be a regular everyday citizen, so they could be skilled fighters, some of them, but some of them might not have been. So it could, you could uh, only get off probably about one, one shot every one to three minutes, all right? So that's not very many. So we're going to be those minute men. We're going to pretend that we're using paper cartridges. That's pre-measured gunpowder and a musket ball that would be in there as well. From these would have made the night before. So we're all going to stand up. And we're going to get down either one knee or two knees. Now whatever your costume allows, sometimes with dresses it's easier to get down on two knees, but whatever you feel most comfortable doing. So you're going to have that musket out in front of you like this, and you're going to pretend that you have a, a satchel stacked with all these paper cartridges in it that you have prepared, and you're going to open it up. Pour the pre-measured gunpowder, and there's a musket ball going in there, and so does the paper from your the paper cartridge that's going to be your wadding. Now, if I were to flip it down right now so I could put more gunpowder, what's going to happen to all that stuff? It's all going to fall out. So we have to pack it in there with that metal stick that's called, does anyone know what it's called? Ramrod, exactly. So take that ramrod out, pack it in there. Pull it back out and put it back. Now you're gonna flip it down. You're gonna flip it down. There is your glass pen right there. You're gonna toss it back halfway, just one. All right, now we're gonna get the gunpowder warm. All right, put that away. Now we're gonna cock it back fully, so it's just one more click, and once we do that, it's ready to fire. So you have to make sure that it is facing downward as we, set, uh, as we stand up slowly. So just one more. All right, now it's ready to fire, we're gonna stand up. And we are going to back up to our chairs. We're gonna back up over here to this plate. So I'm gonna actually come back over here. And we are going to do a practice shot. Let's see, we're gonna try to knock out one of those lights. So we're try to knock out any of those lights that you see up there. So now you can put your muskets up and ready. Aim, fire. <laughs> we all missed. It's hard to hit anything with a musket. I need a big round of applause for my help. <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Samuel. 
Daniel Prescott. But there was yet another man at this time. It really is. Everyone say it. Paul Revere. That's right. Give a big round of applause to Paul Revere. Big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Paul Revere. Paul Revere. Do you have two Delaware signs of case? No question. Now, Paul Revere, do you have two soldiers from the Redcoats that are going to capture you before you get to conference? Who are they? All right, so Remy and Jake, if you two would come right over here. This right over here, this is the road to Concord, all right? So what's going to happen is, Paul Revere, you are going to say your entire part, and then you need to leave Lexington after your speech, and you're going to try to ride to Concord. Let me give you your beloved word, Brown Beauty. <laughs> very strong. Be very careful with her. All right, so you're going to hold on to her, and then you're going to ride, leaving Lexington, right the ground, right the ground, right the ground, and try to get past them, but they're going to catch you. So you're going to probably want to like just make a big circle and try to get past them. They're going to capture you and your horse. Hello, my name is Paul Revere. I'm famous for riding a horse to warn the men. I, along with William Dallas and Daniel Prescott, spread the alarm that the British regular army was coming. The colonists armed themselves against the British troops and fought the battles of Lexington and Concord. I stopped a few miles outside Lexington and never made it to Concord. The Ragoons are out. 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 Yeah, go ahead and stand in line. 
you guys can look like you're going to take your bow. All right. Yeah, let them put their muscles back in the here. Come on. 